About eight years ago, we started doing something kind of fun at our superstar retreats. We asked some of the agents, and you've experienced this, to put together for us uh, basically a blueprint on how they had built their business. And we presented probably 30 or 40 of those at our retreats for the next few years. And then, of course, like happens so often, um, our wonderful competitors caught on to the blueprint idea. And then there was blueprints being presented by everybody under the sun from the mortgage companies to the title companies to the real estate brokers to the, to the NAR to the state associations. Well, four years ago, we did something a little different. After our superstar retreats, both in Las Vegas and on the East Coast, I asked the agents to prepare for me what they felt was the top 10 things they learned or heard during the retreat. Not for me so much as for themselves, as reminders of what they had to do, what they had to work on. And what we do now, and just in case you, you're wondering, if you've been to our retreats, about every 15 days, we send out, starting virtually when the retreat ends through the next year, we send out a copy of one of these top 10 lists. And it's interesting because, you know, I've said for a long time, if we can keep these kinds of ideas foremost in our minds, we have a chance to use them a little more effectively, put them into effect, and, and make them part of who we are. So this particular last July and September, October for East Coast and West Coast, normally I'll receive about 50 blue, excuse me, 50 of these top 10 lists. Well, this time um, I've received probably about 400. So I've been sending them out, which we always do, and a thank you for those that attended the retreats and your great responses. So what I'm gonna do for the next six weeks, it's gonna be a six-week program we're putting on for you. And I've selected six of these top 10 lists that I thought might be of interest, might be of value, and more importantly, are ideas that you can use. And I think we'll have some fun with them. So what we'll do is we'll start with, and I, I'm just going to give a first name if I may. This particular top 10 list came from a customer named Janet, longtime customer of ours. And she started by saying, Mike, the seminar was excellent, which is very complimentary. And here's my top 10 things that I learned at the retreat. Number one, I need to know my presentation extremely well and it needs to be internalized instead of externalized and sounded scripted. Obviously, very important. I'll be role playing four days a week and writing out the scripts, working on a different one each week. Now, I want you to think about that. The challenge that everybody in real estate faces is the independent contractor behavior pattern or attitude that we have. And of course, with that being said, we don't like to be told what to say, we don't like to be told what to do. As a result, we don't know what to say, and most agents don't do anything. So what Janet has said is if I take the presentation materials that we offer, and they're sound, they're good, they're common sense, and you can use them, and you take and you internalize those scripts, instead of sounding robotic, sounding like Mike Ferry talking, it becomes you, which is most important to make that happen. She's gonna role play four times a week. She's gonna write out the scripts, working on a different one each week, because in a matter of time. Now, this takes time. Okay, don't even kid yourself that it doesn't take time to change a behavior, change a habit. So Janet's first thought, I thought was excellent. It, it, it's important to internalize the scripts. Here's number two. I will walk into every listing as an authority. My presence creates authority, and this includes my handshake, my clothing, my smile, and the words I use. You know, that is so important. <clears throat> With the incredible competitiveness of the real estate business today, I mean, what is it? In the United States, 1.3, 1.4 million agents. Um, goodness sakes, there's probably several hundred thousand in Canada, I would guess. With the number of people in the industry today, the competition is becoming stronger and stronger. Now, here's the good news. Half of your competitors don't know what to do, don't know what to say, and can't do anything, and never do anything at all. But to be really competitive and to do the best job for the seller, you need to become an authority because the seller is going to be paying you a very, very rich and handsome commission for your expertise. The expertise is, of course, what makes you an authority. Are you an expert at all phases of the process of listing property? I mean, do you really know what to say? Do you know what to do? Do you know how to handle the objections that come up? Answer their questions. Do you really know the market, the market stats? Do you understand the process involved? Because when you do, you become an authority. And that authority, as, as she said so well, starts with everything from the handshake, the smile, to the scripting you use. So number two, become an authority. Number three, I'm going to start using three by five cards and put all my hot leads on these cards. I'll be ready to talk to my leads virtually every day. 
you know, anybody that is involved in lead generation is going to generate leads. If you're working your past clients, centers of influence, by owners, expireds, just listed, just sold, you're going to generate leads. Now the question is, how are you going to track them? So she's going to put them on a little card, carry that card in her pocket, call them all the time. Why? Because see, if somebody says to you, I'm interested in buying or selling a home, that is a signal that should raise a huge flag in your head. That means they're wanting to give you a commission check. They're offering you money for the service you offer. Why would you put that in a computer in a 19 point drip email campaign and why not just call that person to really verify, qualify, find out what their motivation is, their desire, so you can take care of them. Keep them on three by five cards, keep them in your pocket, your purse, call them all the time. Number four, I am recommitting. Now listen to what Janet said. I'm recommitting to calling every Thursday all of the listings that I have and check off what I've done in the past week to get their home sold, relay that to them along with the market stats and feedback and what we need to do to get the home sold. What is the biggest problem in the real estate industry? Lack of communication. And as we keep advancing with technology, communication actually gets worse and worse. I was just kidding the young people here in the studio about the fact that it's much easier to text than answer your phone. Because we say, well, we don't, we don't need to talk to them now, we'll just text and answer back. Well, your sellers are not as sophisticated technology-wise as you may be. So therefore, the importance of communication has risen to a higher level. Well, let's take this approach. Is your seller ever a little bit nervous when they list their home for sale? The answer is yes, but not a little. There are a lot. And if we go two or three weeks and not communicate to our seller the process, what's going on, the results of the showings or the lack of the showings, the pricing, the market stats, you're really doing a tremendous disservice to the seller because their stress and tension will rise and the higher it gets, the worse it is for you when you finally communicate. Call all of your sellers once a week. Her number five, okay? I will be more aware, now listen carefully, of what I portray on social media. I say this all the time, okay, you're a professional real estate salesperson. You're trying to do 25, 50, 75 transactions a year. You're trying to become one of the best of the best in your community, in your town, you know, where you live. And you know, you're dressed professionally, you're going out making strong presentations. Then, on the weekends, you're with some friends having a few beers, sitting by the pool, you're in your bikini, you're in your bathing suit, your shorts, you know, you're, you're diving off the diving board and somebody's filming it and then you post that on social media. Is that the message you want to send to your clients? I would say probably no. Because the trouble is, with 1.4 or 1.5 billion people on things like Facebook, everything's being exposed. Be careful of the exposure on social media because the world is looking at this kind of stuff today. If you're going to use social media and you're going to be a professional business person, portray the life of a professional business person. I'm not saying sit by the pool in shirt and tie. But certainly don't sit by the pool and have, if you're a guy, three girls hanging around in bikinis and seven beers in your hand. And if you're a gal, you know, with most of your body exposed, which shouldn't be exposed in the first place. Social media is great. It can be dangerous also. Number six, I will be willing to confront them during the presentation. Now think about that. Jenna says, I'll be willing to confront during a presentation and be unemotional when I may receive their confrontation back. What we talked about at the retreat last year was this. They're thinking about a price like this. You're thinking about a price like this. There is a big division there. Your job is to get it sold at a price that is competitive and good for sellers and buyers to bring two parties together. Everybody gets emotional regarding price. Everybody's home that you list, they believe that theirs is the best home ever listed for sale and will be the fastest to sell until the reality sets in of that transaction. So we have to be willing to confront. Now the confrontation is the ability to ask questions. Confrontation is not getting mad, getting upset, yelling and screaming, which people think it is. Confrontation is being willing to ask a question. You know, Mr. And Mrs. Solar, I can appreciate that you want 495,000 for your home. But as you can see here in black and white, the highest price sale to this point has been 450, which is why I recommended a price of 450. Would you consider that price if we could get your home sold? 
Well, no, Mike, we, we, we really need that 495. Well, gosh, I, I really appreciate that, but let me ask you a question. If you two were looking for a home, and there were three for sale, and they were very similar, and two were at 450, and one was at 495, which would you choose? Well, we'd probably pick the one at 450. Don't you think most buyers will feel like you? Now, those are questions that many people say are a good way to engage a conversation, but most importantly, it creates a little confrontation. Don't be afraid of confrontation. All you have to say to yourself is don't respond emotionally when they respond back. Number seven, she said, I will know my stats better and use those stats when listing property. Because throughout North America today, okay, here we are, the week of March, what is it, March 20th, we know that in some parts of the U.S. and Canada, the market's going this way, some parts of the country, the market's this way, and many parts of the country, the market is this way, especially with this past week, again, a change in the interest rates, bumping them up a little higher than the past. Now, Market stats are nothing more than the facts and the figures that you need to present to a seller because most of them don't know the facts and figures. Use them as the body and the strength of your presentation. Number eight on Janet I thought was terrific. She goes, my business plan is my treasure map. Isn't that a great word, treasure map? And I look at it weekly to keep me motivated, okay? I've got a plan for what I want to do in 2017. I've got my goals, my objectives. I've got the status of how I'm going to make it happen. I've got a good schedule lined up. I know the process. I know the road I have to take. It's easy to take your plan and write it and then put it away and not look at it again. The key to a business plan is to understand your goals and objectives, your plan, it's a working document. It's something you're working towards. As Earl Nightingale said, success is the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal. All right, you're moving towards. So your business plan has to be looked at. You have to be involved in it. You have to play with it. You're going to change it. You're going to write on it. You're going to make markings on it. It doesn't have to be perfect in terms of what it looks. It has to be perfect in terms of what you can do. Number nine, listen to number nine from Janet. I will be early on all my appointments, so I'm prepared and ready to get a signature. I've said for many, many years, one of the biggest problems in real estate is time management. You know, we're always getting ready to get going, to begin, to get moving, to do something. Maybe tomorrow if we have the time, provided nothing comes up, of course. Well, our job is to be there early. Why? Because they are anticipating you. They're, remember, they said they're a little stressful. It's, it's called normal. They're a little emotional. So what we teach is get to the house, your presentation, 15 minutes in advance. If you're a woman, check your hair, check your makeup, guy, check your tie. Read your scripts. Get yourself back into momentum, go up to the door, and make your presentation as strongly as you can. And then number 10, Janet wrote down, I will start reading more books and, and have written down multiple books to read from the retreat and the ones that Mike mentioned. Um, if, if you don't know what books to read on my website, just look up the reading list. I think I have a list of about 800 books that I want you to read. Uh, they're divided by category from sales, psychology, biographies, autobiographies. There, there's just, you cannot read enough great books to stimulate the mind. Well, I think you can see what Janet provided for us is very important because the 10 ideas that she presented, and you'll see this for six straight weeks, each time this list is presented, it's going to be different. So in essence, probably the next six weeks, you should get at least 50 to 60 great ideas on improving the quality of your business in your life. If you attended the retreat, which I know a lot of you did, it's still not too late to send in your list. If you've attended the retreat and you're not reading what I'm sending out, start reading what I'm sending out. It's valuable stuff. And if you'd like to go to the retreat, we'd love to have you there. Call the office and get registered. Again, it's the week of March 20th. Look forward to chatting with you next week. Have some fun.